Hi, I'm Dami from eLearn Nintendo Museum. For a couple of lessons, we have learned primary chords playing in different patterns. We have C, C chord, F chord, and G chord. Even G seventh chord. This is G seventh chord. It's primary chord. And these are root position and playing in quartz pattern. Right? Do you remember? Yes, exactly the same chord. We use these chords in different songs. So today, we're going to learn the song Go Tell Aunt Rody, which is very popular song and very famous song in every country. You must have different names in your country. in America, Go Tell Aunt Rody. So we're going to learn this song with a plane on C, G, F primary chord in root position and in a warts pattern. Now let's just start. First, we will start with the right hand, which is very familiar tune, so it's easy. Now what is the first note? E. E with finger number three starts one, two, three, go. Every good boy does fine. E, G, B, D, F. Do you remember? Yes, E. But the finger number is two, not three. Why? Because we have to go up to A. If we use finger number two on D, then when we have to play it A later on, there is no finger. Of course, you can go like this, but it will disconnect the melody lines. So instead of playing three, we will use finger number two. So you have to remember. Many times, students playing it D automatically without looking at the note names. Then, mm -mm, it's not right. So you have to make sure that. So start with the E dotted quarter note, followed by eighth note. How's the rhythm then? Do you remember last time we talked about it? Long, short, long, short. Yes. So it's going to be D, F, G, G. That's the rhythm. So this is one of the most tricky part. A little bit confusing. But once you get it, then it's easy because it's coming back again one more time. So now let's just start from the part. One, two, three, go. But it's not an F. Where? E again. So don't hit F because you end up with finger number four on G. Doesn't mean that finger number three end up in F. No, it's on E. Got it? So come back to the main melody lines again. that we have to switch the finger number two to E and later on after after G we have to play it E with finger number three so like skipping down that's the part 
So I wrote the finger number only where that you need to watch out. The last of the part, I didn't write it at all because it's going to be the regular. If I keep writing the finger number, then students start looking at the finger number and they just play. So I don't want it to happen. You just only watch out the part, the C to E, skipping E with finger number two, and coming back later on from G to E, only this part. Now, the first melody line and the second melody line is exactly the same. So right hand just literally repeats the melody twice. Difference is on your left hand. Now first, what kind of pattern is that? Root position, yes. Chords in root position. And G7 and C. So if you're looking at the first line, literally C and G7, which we already know. What about the second line? Yes, F and C. That's it, F, C. And again, later on, G and C. So we only have three chords, C, F, G7. The difference is you just play in chords every two beats. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So you can, you can looking at the notes or either you just can looking at the chords and play the left hand. That's fine. So whichever is comfortable for you, you can just take it. Read the note, left hand on the chord, or you can just looking at the chord symbols. That's what it's for, actually. Now, looking at the second page, what kind of pattern is that on the left hand? Chorus, but in words pattern. Remember I said, if you have two different chords in one measure, then how do you have to go? Right away. So maybe that's the most confusing part. So if you have trouble playing the chords, then take the part away and practice a number of times. Try not to play it like this, not having sound. That's gonna make very bumpy and messy. Try not to play like this, but if you can, leave it after you hit the next note. Do you see it? How I did? Of course, that one is you can play it without leaving it because it's the same note. So, literally, you just lift it up and play. But from C to the last of two, play and leave. Keep holding, hit these two notes and leave. That's really important. If you play it like this, then that sound not really good. Especially if you're looking at the next chord, G7 and C. Hold it, hit, and you leave. And then you have to keep holding this notes until you hit the C and leave. And hit and leave. So this part you have to practice. much smooth so you have to hold it this is very important technique when you play chords now go back to the very beginning of the song and let's play both hands together right hand on E and left hand in C chord one two three go
Watch out your right hand. right there's only one thing that you have to be careful with right hand melody line has to be smoothly connected when you play a left hand chords if you're looking at the first line connecting D to C your right hand is holding it D but your left hand has to leave so that part be careful many times students are playing both hands together because you know it's easy to move both hands together at the same time but you have to hold holding it your hands on the different times your right hand keep holding while your left hand is just keep leaving and changing do you see it hold it and change and left hand hold it and right hand change do you see two different actions are going on in the same measure you have to be careful with it. First time when you practice it, just practice note and rhythm and chords, these three things. And when you can play it well, then start think about these things. So, hold it the right hand, left hand hold it. Do you see it? Not like, both hands exactly at the same time. You have to do different up actions actually on your hand. Now we call that one hand coordination. If you want to make sure that you are a really good hand coordinator or not, try this on your left. Maybe I will close the piano, it's easier to see it. Your right hand, tap, and your left hand is just rubbing it, side. Up and down. Do you see it? One, two, three, go. And switch the hand. Switch the hand. So you have to be able to switch it hands as fast as possible. Now what happened? Either we hit it or we rub it. Up and down and up and down. Try not to do that. That's what we call hand coordination. This action is happening and hold throughout the song. Hold it. Left hand hold it. Right hand hold it. And then you can, you know, maybe try to leave it, but hold it and go. About it when you practice first page. Now let's move it on to the second part. One, two, ready, go. part because your right hand and left hand plays on different times so far we play together but not this part now do you see it because right hand is dotted quarter note so one two right after left hand one two and then together so it goes one left right both so one left, right, both. That's how you drop on the piano. 
Let's go back to the same place one more time. One, two, three, go. part is more confusing than the first one because it has more known and more combinations because we play it every beat and sometimes right hand and left hand is not together or so we play more notes than the first page but if you keep practice it should be easier because anyway as you see it most of the song shares the same chord over and over again. So if you know the C chord, C will never change. C is this one forever. And G7 is normally like this. It will never change, right? Because G is G, C is C. So try to remember as you play the chord, and maybe later on you can apply these chords to the different songs. How is the lesson? Is it confusing? It gets okay, right? We learned already C chord, G chord, and F chord playing in repetition and the words pattern. It has been a couple of weeks, so you must know. Only the difference is right hand melody line because we play different songs. It was a simple gift. It was Aunt Rody and Skip to My Loop, but the left hand is the same. C chord is a C chord, F chord is an F chord, and G7 With the same themes but the difference is your right hand melody line and the combinations how you're gonna match the beat so practice slow if it's not coming well then just working on the first part and add the second part later or if you have trouble playing the second part then just practice second part you don't have to play a whole song from the beginning to the end just practice the part by part, first part and second part, and put it both in together later. And next week will be the last lesson of the chord time. And with using this same primary chord, we're gonna play the different songs next week, which is a very famous song. next week with different songs so practice hard and I will see you next week